Good morning, everyone. My name is Isabel, and I'd like to introduce our presentation today. We are from St. Clair's Primary School on the Harrow's Cross, and we have been busy doing a project on marine litter and especially on plastic islands. We will be talking to you about our approach on the project. Luke will be discussing what it is meant by plastic islands. Ashling is going to tell you about some of the problems we look at regarding overpackaging. And finally, Tom and myself will be talking to you about our new initiative, the Plastic Challenge. We hope you enjoy our presentation. I will now hand you over to Luke, who will talk to you about plastic islands. Thank you, Isabel. My name is Luke, and I'm here to tell you about plastic islands. Some of you may be wondering, what is a plastic island? At first, we thought a plastic island was something solid that you can walk on, like a boat or a real island. But in reality, it is much different. Here you can see a picture of what we first thought when we, he when we heard about plastic islands. So, what is a plastic island? A plastic island is like a soup or stew of plastic that is found in the sea. It is made up of all the plastic waste that finds its way into the ocean. The ocean tides then sweep it out to sea where it gets trapped in currents called gyres. A gyre is a circular current formed by weather and tides and it traps the plastic in a particular area. Here you can see some pictures of what the plastic in a gyre might look like. As you can see, it is well, well spread out and a lot of the plastic is floating below the water surface so it can't be seen from above. The largest plastic island is called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It is so big that some people have called it the Seven Continent and it is over 18 times the size of Ireland and twice the size of Texas. Some people believe that is, it is even bigger than the USA. You can see in this picture that, it is, that the plastic island is huge and it is spread over a massive area. You might be wondering how all this plastic gets there. Well, did you know that 80% of marine litter comes from land-based activities like littering in towns and cities, overflowing litter bins, and microbeads in cosmetics that are washed down the drain and toilet or from lost shipping containers. The problem is that the plastic in the ocean never actually biodegrades. Over a long time it is worn down into smaller and smaller pieces called microplastics. These tiny pieces can then be eaten by fish and other marine life and can be very harmful. Scientists believe that 1 million seabirds and 100,000 marine mammals die each year because of marine litter. This is something that we think is terrible and should be stopped. Now I will hand you over to Ashling, and she will talk about some of the problems that we discovered in our investigation. Thank you, Luke. In our class, we were shocked when we found out that 70% of marine litter is made out of plastic, so we tried to look at the different causes for this. We discussed where most of the plastic comes from, and we agreed where one of, the, one of the biggest problems is the amount of plastic packaging on everything we buy. The production of plastic worldwide has increased from 1.5 metric tons in 1950 to 230 metric tons in 2009, and the problem is getting worse every year. In every supermarket and shop you go into, almost everything is covered in plastic. Fresh fruit and vegetables, drinks, yogurt, milk, cheese. Many pieces of fruit and vegetables are in a plastic tray which is then covered by one or two layer of a layers of a plastic film that is often not recyclable, like you see here. In the, in the past, it may have been possible to buy many more loose fruit and vegetables, but now supermarkets are selling all their products covered in plastic because they think it's more convenient. However, we think that if people knew what a problem this is for the environment, they would think twice about buying so much plastic. People need to be given a choice by supermarkets to, buy, to shop more responsibly 
responsibly and buy less plastic. So to help raise awareness about this problem, we decided to investigate how much plastic waste our school community is creating. So we got all the classes in our school to bring in their plastic waste from home each day for a week. Then our class went around, collected, bagged and stored the rubbish so we could show our school how much plastic we have used. We use. The results were amazing. In just one week, our school community alone created over 55 kilograms of plastic waste. That's the same waste as six. That's the same as 60 large bin bags. Here you can. Here's a picture of our class hard at work and a picture of our plastic mountain. So we were shocked. We were totally shocked about the amount of plastic our school created in a week. So we decided to see how much that would work out over the course of one year. In the course of one year, our school community w alone will accumulate nearly 3,000 kilograms of plastic waste. That's the same as an Asian elephant. If we calculated this across the whole population of Dublin, that will be over 4,000 tonnes of plastic waste. Now I will hand, no, that's the same waste as 1,333 elephants. Now I will hand you over to Isabel, who's going to talk to you about our new initiative, the Plastic Challenge. Thank you, Ashton. We were really concerned about the results of our plastic collection and shocked at the effects of all this plastic waste on the marine environment, so we decided that something had to be done. We looked at what we could buy in a supermarket without any single-use plastic packaging. Well, we figured, very little. The first thing we decided to do was write emails to the main supermarket chains and shops, Aldi, Little, Tesco, Supervalue, Dunn Stores, Spar, etc. to complain about the amount of single-use plastic packaging and ask what plans they had to reduce it. The replies we received did not really inspire confidence. Dunn stores told us that they would pass on their comments internally. Tesco said that they would pass our comments on to the suppliers. Little said that they, ha they had taken our feedback on board for future use and Aldi told us they were committed to working with their packaging partners to improve the, their packaging in order to minimise its impact on the environment. We were not really happy with any of these responses as they stopped short of saying that they would actually remove plastic, pa plastic from their packaging. We also wrote to Food Dudes about the same problem. We discussed in class some different actions we could take part in to encourage people to use less plastic and that's when we came up with the plastic challenge. We came up with the idea of a plastic challenge because we remembered the ALS Ice Bucket Challenge in 2014 and decided we should make a plastic challenge as a fun way of raising awareness about overpackaging products and to help change people's behaviour. To try to create publicity in school, we came up with our own poster campaign too, based around hashtag plastic challenge. Here you can see some of the posters we created, as well as our slogan, Save Our Sea, Save Our World. So you're, pro so you're probably thinking, what are the rules of the plastic challenge? Not buying any single-use plastic for one week, or not buying anything containing the top four items, plastic bottles, street wrappers, lids, and bags. These were the top I plastic items found in the 2014 Big Beach Clean in Ireland. We hope that people tweet pictures of their plastic-free shops using the hashtag plastic challenge as a way of raising awareness. People can compete with each other to see how much less plastic they are buying. We know from our research this is a difficult task, but we think by taking part in this challenge, people will start to realise how dependent they are on plastic. We hope that this will help people change their habits and put pressure on supermarkets to give people more options when they go shopping. Over the past few weeks, people have been attempting the plastic challenge and tweeting their results to our school Twitter account. It has been a really difficult challenge to compete, but it really got us and our parents thinking about all the unnecessary plastic that is in our supermarkets, and we hope that more people will try it themselves. Here are some tweets that people have sent in. The future. This is our vision of the future, a plastic-free supermarket. In Berlin, there is a packaging-free supermarket, which we thought was awesome, how you don't have to use any plastic and still have a normal shop. We also read an article about a family who bought no single-use plastic for a month. They found it very difficult and had to completely change their shopping habits. Hopefully in the future, we will not have the same problems. 
Thank you, Tom. To finish your presentation, I would like to remind you all of the importance of reducing the amount of plastic waste that we are creating. Unless we all act now, our seas and marine animals will be destroyed. It is up to us as consumers to demand that our shops give us more options while shopping so that we can, redu so that we can reduce the amount of waste that we are creating. If we refuse to buy plastic products, then the shops and suppliers will be forced to act. Please join us all in St. Clair's in taking part in the Plastic Challenge and we can make a difference. Thank you for listening to our presentation. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed learning about it.